double distribution is how I would answer this, where I distribute my 3x to my 5x and my negative 6y. That's right. Quadratic formula. Wait, how does that go again? Oh yeah, I got it. Alright, so this is how you say it. X equals negative B plus or minus square root of B square minus 4AC. Hey, welcome to Math Star, where we develop your conceptual understanding, your procedural fluency, and your critical thinking skills to help you become one step closer to success. My name is Orin, and today we're working in the GED practice test featured by Kaplan. Okay, so I, I realized that the GED uh, practice tests that are made by Kaplan, and man, they have such good material via books and all this other stuff. Um, I, could, I actually picked up my Kaplan GED book, uh, study guide book from the uh, library. And I was able to, you know, check it out, and it's, it's been really good. It's been really helpful in um, finding study material for the GED and um, practice problems. It's good with telling you how to do certain things and all that kind of stuff. And it's all, like, um, segmented. You know, you can see different parts and stuff. But anyway, today I'm working on the first five questions on the GED practice test. I believe this is very similar to the GED. I look at Facebook on the GED Facebook <coughs> Facebook page. And on the GED Facebook page, they say the Kaplan stuff matches their test very well. Sometimes it's 50%, sometimes 75% of the test actually looks like stuff they've already seen before. So, what better thing to use as GED practice than Kaplan? Alright, so I'm going to go over these first five questions. It says I can't use a calculator here, and I have to use 20 or fewer minutes to answer them. I'm going to use my recording time to keep track. So I've honestly already wasted a minute and a half just now, but I'm going to get into it. I'm going to explain it as much as I can. However, I, I'm really just doing this uh, and working through this so you can see how to work through it. I did not look at the answers ahead of time. I'm using my own critical thinking to figure this out, and I expect for you to actually study using this. I expect you to watch or pause it before, you do, before I do number one, watch how I do it after you've tried it for yourself. See if your answers match up. See if your work looks similar. See what's different. And um, that way you're kind of learning and growing along with that. Okay? So um, now with two minutes in, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Mike borrowed $400 from his brother for six months. Okay? He agreed to pay a simple interest at the annual rate of 5%. So I'm going to write 5% right there. Including interest and principal, how much will Mike uh, have paid his brother at the end of six months? So this is the principal and this is the interest. Okay, so they want to know what, what all that's looking like, you know, with um, how much he paid his brother. All right, so 400 is a principal. That means, you know, you're starting them out. And 5 is your rate. But it says annual. Annual means year. Okay. So how many? How much in a year? So this is five percent in a year. But he paid it in six months. So we got to do half of that. So half of five percent is two point five percent. Now we're going to turn this into a decimal. And the way that we turn a percent to a decimal is the simple way of just taking your decimal place and moving it to the left two spaces. Okay. So 2.5, and you move your decimal place to the left two spaces, gives you a zero and a point right there. Uh, the zero goes in that, that extra little loop if you it ran out of numbers, and that's how you would make that. So now I'm just going to set this up. 400 times 0 0.025, okay? Uh, that decimal's a little high. Let me put the one right there. All right, now, um, 5 times 0 is 0, 5 times 0 is 0, 5 times 4 is 20, Okay, now I'll make it a zero for its placeholder, and then two times zero is zero, two times zero is zero, then f four times two is eight. Okay, I'm going to add these two numbers together, I get zero, 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 and then a zero, one for ten, right? Uh, so three zeros and then a ten, because eight plus two is ten. Now, if you didn't notice, there are... There, there are three decimal places here. This one doesn't matter, you know. Like, like I'm, like I'm. That's just me writing it too high. Uh, I can't erase it very well. But this one down here was uh, three decimal places. 
Um, so I'm going to have a decimal place, three decimal places away here as well. Okay, so I have 1 0 0.000 or just plain old fashioned $10. So he paid his brother $10 as the interest plus his principal of $400. So he paid $410. Don't get that confused, okay? Don't get that twisted. Don't get it mixed up and all that kind of stuff, okay? So I'm going to actually erase at this point. So if you want to pause to copy this down, great. I'm going to erase so I can move on to the next thing. So I'm at five minutes in. What's the value of the expression 3 times 2x minus y plus 3 plus x squared when x equals 4 and y equals 5? Pause right now to try it for yourself. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, substitute in a 4 where the x is, wherever the x is, in a... Um, Five, wherever the y is okay so I'm just taking that I'm, I'm substituting in whenever I see the X or wherever I see a y I'm putting in the four or a five depending on what it says <clears throat> okay now I'm going to use PIM dots or order of operations I'm going to work inside this parentheses first inside the parentheses I see two times four so two times four is eight and that's minus five and that's still inside the parentheses Okay, you don't have to write as much as I am. Inside of this parentheses is 3 plus 4. 3 plus 4 is 7. So, yep, and put it like that. Now, 8 minus 5 is 3. So, I'm going to write this down one more time. Where the 3 is on the outside now, it's a 3 on the inside. Plus 7 squared. Okay, the parentheses don't even have to be there. I just, I just write it. All right, 3 times 3. Now, we're on the, um, the M part of PEMDAS for right, this part. But then, I guess this is the exponent part, so this is plus 49, okay? And this part right here, 3 times 3 is 9, so 9 plus 49. 9 plus 49 equals, you could list it out like this, 49 plus 9 if you need to. And this 9 plus 9 is 18, uh, you carry the 1, and then uh, bring that, 1 plus 4 is 5, so this should be 58, Okay? And 58 is your answer. Okay, I'm moving on to the next one. These are going to disappear. Number three. Number three says, which of the following is equal to the expression below? We have 3x uh, plus 2y, 5x minus 6y. Um, okay, so I'm going to rewrite this. You do not have to rewrite if you don't want to, but the rewriting is crucial for me to get this correct. Now, I mentioned not re rewriting, but um, you should if you have the time to. All right, now I'm going to use the distribution method, okay? So I'm going to distribute with a different color. Double distribution is how I would answer this, where I distribute my 3x to my 5x and my negative 6y, the two different terms. 3x times 5x is 15x squared, because you multiply the numbers together, which is 15, and you multiply your x's together, which is x squared, okay? And 3x times negative 6y is negative 18, because 3 times negative 6 is negative 18, xy. Now I'm going to multiply 2y times 5x and 2y times negative 6y, so I get a positive 10 and I'm going to switch this around x y and I get a negative 12 y squared okay now my last step here after I've double distributed is to combine my like terms my like terms are in the middle they're like terms because they both have a x y no fancy numbers with them or anything like that those are the only ones that are in common and 18 minus 10 is negative 8, so it's negative 8xy. Your variables stay the same. And I have 15x squared right there and a negative 12y squared right there. This is my final answer, and let's see what matches. It matches with answer choice D. Answer choice D. So cool stuff with that. <coughs> Thank you.
Okay, nine minutes in. The, the key is to make sure that you get this stuff done before the time limit so you have time to look back and see what you need to do. You know, what, what's missing if you have any problems with anything, if something seems a little bit more difficult and you want to look at it. Alright, John, number four says John needs to replace boards on a 22 foot section of his fence. He plans to place boards as shown below. If the boards are five and a half inches wide, how many boards should he buy to cover the distance? Pause the video now if you want to try this on your own. All right, let's look at this. He wants to, uh, the, the distance is 22 feet, right? That's a 22 foot uh, distance, okay? So if the boards are five and a half inches wide, this is how it's going to be counting five and a half <clears throat> and then or I would even convert that into a decimal do 5.5 that's easier to look at <clears throat> now 5.5 times 2 or you know if you count by 5.5 5.5 times 2 is uh, 0 right there carrying to 1 5 times 2 is 10 and then that added that extra 1 is 11 and the decimal place goes the same distance away so 5.5 5 times uh, times 2 is 11, or 5.5 5 plus 5.5 5 is 11, okay? So that's two of them, two 5.5s, or 5 and a half is 11. Not multiple choice, so you got to trust yourself a little bit with it. What is the value of the expression? Now this is like PEMDAS heavy right here. We have negative 3 times 5 squared plus... 2 times 4 minus 18 plus 3 cubed. Okay? Pause the video now if you want to try it for yourself. Alright, so with order of operations, you know, it's please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And with that, we work with our P first, our parentheses first. So in the parentheses is this. 4 minus 18. 4 minus 18 is negative 14. Okay? Uh, I'm just going to rewrite everything else so that it looks a little more organized and it's not like overly confusing on what's going on here. Plus, I have the time to do so. Um, anyway. Alright, so next I'm going to work with my E, my exponents, because my parentheses stuff, there's nothing else I can do with this negative 14. Alright, so E is exponent, so now negative 3 times. This is going to be 5 squared, which is 25. That's the exponent stuff. 2 times negative 14 uh, plus this, which is 3. 3 cubed is really 3 times 3 times 3. Where 3 times 3 is 9, and then another 3 times 9 is 27. Okay? That's what a cubed, 3 cubed looks like. Okay? So now I'm going to work with multiplication and division, but there's no division here, so just straight up multiplication. Negative 3 times 25 is going to give me a negative 75. Then I have 2 times negative 14. 2 times negative 14 is going to give me a negative 28. Then I also bring down my plus 27. Okay, so multiplication and division are handled. Now I'm going to handle adding and subtraction. Okay, addition and subtraction. Now even though order of operations in PEMDAS has addition first, they are interchangeable based on how you read it. So you have to read this from left to right. And you're literally going to work with your subtraction stuff first before you actually work with your addition stuff. I know order of operations and it has the A in front of the S, but these are really interchangeable, okay? They can go together. I make a video about this um, early. I made a video bit about it earlier in my channel. So you can look that up if you'd like to. So we have a negative 75 minus 28. That's going to give me a negative 103 plus 27. Now you could line this up and actually do the math for yourself to see, to double check me. You know, that's perfectly fine. I'm about to line, line this next one up negative 103 and that's minus 27 
Now to make this a little bit easier for me to see, I'm just going to write it as 103. I'm just going to make sure I make the, the bigger number is the negative 103. So my number at the end is going to be a negative number, okay? I, I, I just have to keep that in the back of my mind. So I have 23 minus 27. Why is it minus? Because it's a positive and negative, so it's gonna, you're going to have a subtraction going on. <clears throat> Alright, so 3 is one to borrow, wants to borrow from 10, but it cannot. I'll borrow from the 1 next to it. Make that a 10. Now the 3 can borrow from the 10, so now it's a 9. 3 becomes 13. 13 uh, minus 7 is 6. 9 minus 2 is 7. The 0, you know, whatever. So this is a negative 76. Alright, so that's it. Time. Um, I'm, I'm done. This is my answer, negative 76. So what would, you, what would your answer go for in the box? Boom, negative 76. That's, a, that's it. That's a wrap. So, thank you so much for your time. If you enjoyed anything, give me a like on this video. I would appreciate that very much. So, subscribe for notifications of more videos. Go to MathThrive.com to request GED tutoring if you are interested. Um, if you have any questions, like I said, leave them in the comment section below. I enjoy teaching. I enjoy tutoring. I enjoy um, solving problems. And I enjoy seeing other people solve problems as well. So, yeah, uh, we are now at roughly 18 minutes, uh, if I didn't um, try to make cuts or anything to the video, um, so you can do this, you can do what I just did, I, I over explained a bunch of stuff, and I'm doing intros, and now I'm doing, uh, you know, closing to the video, and it's still, you know, 20 minutes haven't even hit yet, so if I can do it, with these five questions, you can do it as well. I can help you get there, okay? So, thank you so much for your time, y'all. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Got a low grade? Go to math, right? You need some math aid? Go to